Number nine. Be strong and courageous to carefully obey. What are we talking about? Now he says it again. Verse 6, he said, be strong and courageous because you will eat. Verse 7, be strong and courageous. And in many translations, because be, you need to be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Hello. Don't turn to the left or to the right. You need to be accurate. You need to be accurate. Be strong and courageous to carefully obey. My brother, my sister, to obey the word. Yes, I must obey. So I'm going for the light, not for the darkness. I must do this. I mustn't do that. But anybody experience that in your life that you stood by faith, you obeyed God, and it still didn't work out? Because what you need to obey, how you need to obey, in what way, that is the thing. My obedience need to be accurate. Need to be accurate in what he has for me. And sometimes we only obey when we understand. No, I obey even if I don't understand. But I need to do what he has asked me to do. Many times we obey with a level of ignorance instead of a level of childlike faith. Childlike faith and ignorance can be very close to one another. Hello? Because you can say the child is ignorant. Now you can call it innocence. You can even call it innocence. Ignorance and innocence. Yeah. Are you with me? There's an innocence that can look that this child is really ignorant. But there's an ignorance that is absolute foolishness, where I don't know how. And my attitude wasn't wrong, but I really didn't take the time with God. And I don't need to take the time of God with God so that my fear and all these other stuff are over, so that I understand, so that I can be in control. Because I feel safe when I'm in control. Uh-uh. I need to hear from God so that my obedience will be accurate. Because in many ways, we can feel I'm obeying God. But this man, God's going to challenge him. He's going to tell him, you go seven times around Jericho, and the last day seven times, and then you're going to scream, and then, yeah. Okay, and what then, Lord? I don't know if he told him, and then exactly this is how the, the wall is going to fall in, and this is then what's going to happen, and so, so, so. But he had to be careful to accurately obey God exactly. What if he stopped on the sixth day? Are you with me? Because he saw nothing. He didn't even see a crack in a wall. There's not even 1% success. There's not even 1% growth or any impact, any effect in this walking around the city. Huh. Some of us, we went through some of those stuff. But please, my brother, carry on. But make sure you are accurate. Don't be, don't be ignorant. Is that the word? What did we say? But we need to be, there need to be innocence in our faith. Innocence in our faith, like a little child, that I don't need to understand everything. But ignorant in a way where we are actually slack to get out to God, to hear from Him. Foolish. In that ignorance there is foolishness. In that ignorance there is foolishness, like the foolish virgin that didn't take the extra oil. Foolish builder, he didn't take time with the word, took time with the foundations. Okay, careful to obey. Number 11, keep the truth on your lips. This is for somebody crossing over into their destiny. Okay, hopefully you. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. What's on your lips, my brother? How frequently on your lips? Moaning, groaning, negativity. How frequently on your lips? Some wara wara jokes that are actually too, too much in the flesh. How frequently on your lips the negativity? 
But if you want to walk into your destiny, you better keep the truth on your lips. Not just in your heart, on your lips. You speak forth destiny. You speak forth death and life in the power of the tongue. Those who use it, they will eat the fruit thereof. Uh, Proverbs 18, 21. Hey, remember that. Proverbs 18, 18, 21. So you speak life. You speak life into that what God has for you. Please, please, doesn't matter what you feel, especially when you, when you know your heart is going here, your feelings there, your, your thoughts are going there, then come, 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 direct these thoughts, these emotions, these circumstances, these mindsets, direct this stuff, all this stuff with truth on your lips. You put the truth on your lips. I, you don't feel like believing it. You don't feel like reading it. You don't feel like... You are irritated by it even, but you will put it on your lips. Because with that, you will steer the boat into the direction that it must go. Don't let it be lit from hell, but from heaven. Amen. Like we said before. Very important. Okay. Keep the truth on your lips. Next one. Meditate on truth. Meditate on the truth. Also still verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it day and night. Now is the time for the breakthrough. It's not time for a major long sermon. You know, after all these hundreds of years, now we're going to cross the Jordan. And now is first this major sermon <laughs> of everything that we're supposed to do. It's God saying, this is the most important what I say, you need to say. What I'm saying, you meditate on that. Because in meditation, you align yourself with his mind. My mind needs to be aligned with his mind. So meditate. So, like I challenge the guys in the first service, and I challenge you maybe uh, 50 times already. When I was still studying medicine, but I uh, started, you know, Okay, forget about that. And I'm at this dam in uh, Heilbronn. God said, this one day, and I was ready. God said, I must go for the day there to the dam, and it's going to be this time with God. And I was really like, okay, what's going, we going to do? And God gave me Zephaniah 317 for the first time in my life. I read that verse, and it was like, whoa, the Lord your God with you. Mighty to save, take great delight in you, quiet you with his love, rejoice over you of singing. And God said, I must say that verse over and over for today. My brother and my sister, it was very nice for like a half an hour. And then some flesh manifested. Oh, I became so frustrated because it was like, yes, I understand the revelation. I got the peace. I got the joy. I hear his heart. And now and I must carry on and I carry on and I carry on. Whoa. And after an hour, my thoughts are going there. My thoughts are going there. My, I'm so frustrated. I'm so irritated. Ah, let me go for one and a half hour of teaching here. You will freak out. Only, only two of you. The rest of you will rejoice in the long teaching. But Maybe two will freak out about how long this is taking. But you know, a movie can go to an hour and a half for some reason. I know. Because you decide that I can cope with that. But you decide I on, can only cope with God's word for so long. Then I cannot do it anymore. Yo, I was so shocked at my flesh and my frustration. When I had to say this verse over and over again, I challenge you, do it for one hour or two hours where you just say one verse over and over. Please, next Sunday, anybody, you've done it for one hour, not for all day, for one hour, come and testify about even how you had to deal with your flesh. And then sometimes... When that irritation came up, I had to say, God, forgive me for this irritation. Forgive me for this. I'm now tired, you know, to, I'm too tired to say this verse again. 
Hello. And whatever excuse you can think of, whatever thing is coming up, just cut it out. Just cut it out. Just cut it out. Just cut it out. And after the three hours, maybe you say, Hallelujah. I'm finished with the Word of God. Um, I, I'm not saying it in a very bad way, but your emotions and your, you could feel, <sighs> God is releasing me after three hours. That Don't look at me with that holy look. <gasps> don't do that for three hours. But you know, that word is not so that I feel good after the three hours. Maybe. But most of the time, not necessarily. I've seen in my life. But it is important for what is laying ahead tomorrow, next week, next year, next month. Very, very, very important. So when you have this big truck and you must uh, throw some diesel in the truck, but you have like a, a, a milkshake straw thing to throw in the diesel. It's going to take long. Hello? And you're going to get more and more excited about after one hour of throwing in diesel. You're going to be so excited, you know? It's going to be such a stirring in your heart. And after the four hours of throwing in the diesel, you're going to feel so refreshed. Hello? I'm totally crazy. No. But that four hours that diesel, that guy, even if he only has like 200 brain cells instead of 2 million or trillion, he, can, he knows this is not for now for me to feel good. This is so that tomorrow and this whole week I understand how to get to the Cape with my truck. He has that savvy, he has that brain cells that telling him that. So he cannot get now frustrated with the fact that he doesn't feel so good after filling up the tank. Are you with me? And so sometimes with the word, we must feel good while filling up the tank. But no, but many of that is for tomorrow. So maybe you feel frustrated when you were busy for three hours or for one hour or for 30 minutes in meditating on the truth. They had to meditate the truth so that they feel good. No, they had to meditate on the truth so that they can take the land and run into their destiny with that what God has for them. And that is tomorrow. Hello, are you with me? I leave you with that. But may God help you with that. Meditate on the truth. Then, verse 8 again, careful to do the truth. Meditate on the truth and then be careful to do the truth because you know the truth. You know the context of truth. If you don't know the context of truth, the devil can take you. Oh, Jesus, you can turn this stone, these stones into bread. No. Jesus, give him truth in context. Everybody say truth in context. He brings context and say, no, the word of God also say, you will not live from bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then the devil comes with another scripture. <laughs> and see, he will charge his angels to keep you safe. You can jump. No, the Lord also says, his word also says, you will not tempt him. He brought context. Your victory your destiny, your inheritance in and in taking the land has to do with truth in context. But don't meditate on the word. Don't put it on your lips. Then you will not do, you will not know how to do the truth. If you cannot speak the word and word, the truth and meditate on the truth, you will not be able to do the truth. Are you with me? Then be careful to do the truth. That is number 13. Number 14, see how you are prosperous and successful. See how you can be prosperous so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. My brother, my sister, uh, the, the, the question is, what's your definition of success? What's your definition of to be successful? Because you're going to run for that. 
when the teacher told you you are stupid, you will not do anything with your life. Of, or somebody said, no, you are too, you're unteachable, you're this, this is what's going to happen in your life. Or somebody belittled you, somebody broke you down, and now you created a definition of success that will nullify those words, as if you should prove them wrong. And if you can prove everybody wrong that said all that negative stuff about yourself, or you yourself, the negative stuff that you are saying about yourself, if you can prove yourself wrong, then you see that as success. What's your definition of success and how to be successful? They were very, they were a successful company of people before they entered the land. Successful in walking with God, in the word, in their faithfulness, in honoring their parents and respecting God and fear the Lord in the right way. They were a successful people before they entered the land. Make sure you understand your definition of success. Otherwise you can go and at the end of the day die and give yourself still 2 out of 10 for the next 40 years of your life. Okay, here we go. Number 15. Again. Everybody say again. Yeah. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Again, be strong and courageous. Because in so many different facets, you need to be strong and courageous. Strong and courageous not to live for yourself. Strong and courageous to get over the flesh. Strong and courageous to do a lot of things. It's, just not, it's not a thing of just strong and courageous to get out of the boat on the sea. At the end of the day, God took him in any case back into the boat. Hello? It was a nice experience. But the faith was that they had to have faith, not to walk on the water, they had to have faith to speak to the storm and that the storm will come so that they will cross onto the other side and do God's will. Are you with me? So may God help you. May God help you in this. What are we saying? Next one. Deal with fear and discouragement through the promise of His presence. Through the promise of his presence. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. When somebody must encourage you, you have all these fears. And then when you understand what's going to happen, there's no fear anymore. Because now you understand. No. That's not supposed to how you deal with the fear. The discouragement and somebody giving you a very good talk about things and yeah, it's good, it's good. But God needs to be in the encouragement. God as love needs to be there to drive out all fear. God needs you to lift you up when you are in discouragement. Hello? And God wants you to deal with the, with the fear and in, in the discouragement just be, because you know he's there. Not... Look, man, you've taken half of Canaan already. Don't be discouraged. You already took half of the land. You don't have to be discouraged. No. Even if you took 80% of the land and you feel discouraged, don't look at the 80% of what, what you took already. No. Be encouraged because God is with you. Your encouragement, your strength is in the fact that God is with you. How much you encourage Ukraine? We are here and suddenly just a lot of things are falling and blowing out some of the guys up and some of the family gone, your child, your father, or your grandfather, or this one or that one. And there's no logical reasoning for what really is happening. Church of Christ, how will you encourage the nation? How can the Church of Christ give answers to Ukraine? Go and stand in the Jordan and don't you cross, but let the nation cross. Let the nation cross, but encourage them that God is with you. Even if we don't understand how it's happening, God is with you. And, and your son that died, God is really with him and he's really with God. And he had a short race, yes. But to make sense out of it, so that you can be encouraged, so that you can be strong, so that you don't fear anymore. It's not going to work. 
But at the end of the day, for what is laying ahead, with a lot of different situations, radical different situations, that they've never seen before in their lives, God says, how you will not be discouraged and not have fear is, no, I'm with you. That's the one thing that is sure. Till you see him face to face, God will be with you. No reason to fear. No reason for discouragement. If you live from that revelation. Amen. But when we don't understand things so easily, we are in discouragement or we are stressed because we don't understand what's happening. Confess, first of all, that you want to be in control. <laughs> oh, are you with me? And give it up. And say, God, I choose not to be discouraged because you're with me. This is a man laying foundations. You can build an excellent house. And the guy next to you built an excellent house. But the fact that the fact that he built the house, now he's not discouraged, he's excited anymore. But you were before you built the house, you got out of discouragement because God is with you. You've laid a foundation for the house. And maybe your house is not even as as strong and as beautiful as the guy next to you. But when the storm comes, that house is going to fall. Because it's built on sand. This house is built on a foundation. That no fear, no discouragement, no negativity. For God is with me. That's a foundation for a life to be built on. Make sure the foundations are right. Amen. As long here, as number 17. Spread the message. That people get themselves ready to cross over and take possession of what God has for them. People need to know that there's a breakthrough for them. This is not for your own. God has never called you to have your breakthrough on your own. He will not go with you in that. He will be there for you to be safe. But his manifest presence and his blessing in that sense will not be there. Are you with me? Allow God really to help you. But that means you cross that Jordan and you stand in the middle of that Jordan for the sake of many others. Make sure they have the word of reconciliation. Make sure they are encouraged that you can say what God is saying. Open your mouth and speak truth into situations. That people get themselves ready to cross over, to take possession. Get yourself ready because Jesus is coming. And you don't know when your life is finished here on earth. And then eternity is laying ahead. Get yourself ready. There was this commandment given. That you as a leader better go and tell the people that they must get themselves ready. Are you with me? May God help you. Let them help one another to inherit the land. That's verse 12 to 15. I'm not reading it for the sake of time. Let them help one another to inherit the land. Here are these guys for hundreds, 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 hundreds of years. Uh, no inheritance uh, coming through uh, these promises of God. Yes, his provision is always there, but it's not coming through. And then, when you are going through, please first stand. Church of Christ, stand with his presence in the middle of the breakthrough and let the rest of the nation cross let ukraine cross let let the nations cross into end time revival like the world has never seen before let it happen so for the nations but then when you're on the other side before you now inherit i mean you got your breakthrough right now go and help the others hallelujah <laughs> First help the others to inherit, and then you go and inherit. Okay, may God help you, my brother, my sister. After you waited long, long, long for a breakthrough, and you prayed, and you fasted, and you, and you spoke the word, and you stood on, and you worked through a lot of rabbis in your own life, and you dealt with that, you dealt with that, and everything. And after everything, you have your breakthrough. And on that day, God says, don't take the land. <laughs> First help others now. And then go and take the land. May God help you that you are protected with an unselfish lifestyle. Because right there, God protects them with humility and unselfishness. That they will have his heart in the whole process of taking the land. No selfishness when you go and get into a major lot of success. Last one. Receive encouragement. 
Is it that the last one? Is that not the last one? Hallelujah. Number 19. Number 19, you can write down. Facilitate commitment with God and man. Verse 16 to 18. Facilitate commitment with God and man. Now this is at the end. When the men, verse 16, said, Then they answered Joshua, Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Wow, that's so absolutely the opposite than their parents with Moses. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. You need that encouragement. We need to encourage one another. And the encouragement is because God is with you. Because God is with you. Let us encourage one another with the words that God is with you, my brother. Yes, you are in circumstances. You're with a lot of stuff. But remember, God is with you. Amen. And in the same time, last one, receive encouragement and lead them, you as a leader. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey it, whatever you may command them, will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Last time, only be strong and courageous. Receive encouragement. You know, but be strong and courageous is basically a command. We want emotionally to be dealt with, with certain things. How I must psychologically and through counsel get out of discouragement and this need to be healed and that need to be dealt with and some of it is right because we're walking a road with one another but at the end of the day it's just plain a command from god <laughs> be strong and courageous Boom. if you are not you're living in sin sure so I must get out of this, and I need brothers and sisters to encourage me and to help me to get out of this. But part of it is confession. God forgive me for not being strong and courageous, because somewhere your word is not in here. Somewhere I'm not obeying accurately. Somewhere this word is not on my lips the whole time. And in all of that, at the end of the day, I'm not strong and courageous. But tomorrow you're going to be strong and courageous, because today we repent. In Jesus' name. Strong and courageous not to do your own will. Strong and courageous not to have the faith and just to take a part of the land where God has never called you to go and slaughter those people in Canaan. It's because it's not your portion. Don't be foolish. But sit with God. Be dependent on Him. Have the wisdom of understanding how to be with Him. And have the faith, have the courage to stand on his word. Have the courage to be unselfish. Have the courage and the strength to give yourself even to others. No, oh, they're walking over me. I'm finished with them. Oh, you did it for their thank you and for their praise. Instead of doing it for God. God said be strong and courageous and do that for them. Lead them into. Lead them into. If they give you a hand clap, please stand there with the, with the ark. You went first into the water, and then he departed. And then when you stand there, and when they pass you, oh, thank you for standing here. Thank you for helping us so that we can cross. If they don't give you a hand clap, you, then you take the ark, and there you go. These ungrateful people. And I must stand here the whole time while they're taking their time to cross the Jordan. Ha! Huh? <laughs> May we grow up. Just tell your neighbor, grow up, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That we can come before you. Ah, Lord, please forgive us. In every facet. Where we can sit here, we can justify our lives. God, that we can serve others. We can do a lot of stuff. But in our heart, we are so intimate with self-justification and self-righteousness. Forgive us for that, Lord, for ignoring you, grieving your spirit by running into that rubbish. We're walking away from that today in the name of Jesus Christ. God, through your spirit, help us through your blood to understand our commitment today that we will be strong and courageous 
to do accurately your word, to obey in an accurate way, to speak truth, to believe truth, to meditate on truth, to go with truth, and with nothing else. Thank you, Father, that you give us that capacity through the word that you've given us, through the spirit, through the opportunity of the blood, through the name of Jesus Christ, and through your presence. So I pray that for every man, every woman in this place. If you're in this place and you know you are discouraged about certain things about the future, about not knowing what, what's going to happen, or maybe finances or circumstances of sickness or whatever, just with every eye closed, I just want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you specifically. God, I pray for this means men and women that you will come and you will just do a great work for them. Come and meet up with them in a special, special, special way. Please, Holy Spirit, come and do that. They're reaching out and you're, according to your word, according to your promises, you will meet up with them, Lord. I pray that so it will be for them in a very special way this week. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and in that name alone. Thank you for what you will do in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Hallelujah. God is awesome.